<laughs> this is a compilation slideshow for 2022. I went through 12,000 photos to share my favorite ones here, mostly rare plants, but a combination of things. So my name is Chris Benda, and I'm currently the coordinator of the Plants of Concern Southern Illinois program, which is a partnership between the Chicago Botanic Garden and Southern Illinois University. And so uh, basically look for rare plants these days and use help from volunteers to uh, conduct the monitoring. Also, you can find me online as Illinois Botanizer, website illinoisbotanizer.com. Uh, I will put this presentation on my YouTube channel later and sort of one of the uh, uh, more challenging and fun uh, projects that I worked on the last two years was the Illinois Big Tree Register. So I'm measuring the the uh, champion cypress tree there. And actually I'm gonna give this talk next here at Giant City, uh, January 8th. We just scheduled to be Sunday at 2 p.m. Talk about updating the big tree registry in Illinois. So that'll be fun. Also my website, I uh, have a repository for a lot of the photos that I've taken in the 15, 16 years I've been in Illinois. So there's a lot of information there. But to go into the, the slideshow, I have them kind of divided into months. There's in Southern Illinois, there's really plant identification and monitoring that can be done any time of the year. There's always, you know, trees in the wintertime, or we say cadaver botany, or you're looking at the dried up remains of, you know, perennial plants. So we really can botanize in any time of the year, but particularly if you're going to do a census on plants, it's best to go when they're most conspicuous, which is typically when they're blooming. So we try to aim our monitoring for that. Um, so things kind of got going mainly in March. And this is one of my favorite trees here. Uh, it's called Leatherwood, Durka palustris. It is rare. It's not listed. If it's listed, I would have a caption there. You know, earlier I couldn't get this to appear. Now I can't get it to go away, but there we go. So this is rare. I might say Illinois E, which is endangered, Illinois T, which would be threatened. But this is just a rare one that I think could make the case that it could be, should be state listed. But these are the little yellow blooms on the leatherwood. And on this particular shrub, it's only in Jackson and Pope and Johnson counties for Southern Illinois, at least. It is statewide, but it's in these more mesic areas. And it has a twig that is very flexible. I mean, you can easily bend it. You could bend it around in a circle and it won't break and it'll go right back to the same shape. I like to tell people that you could tie your shoes with a twig of leatherwood. They are that pliable. In fact, one of the one of the one of the ways we found a new population was on private land, and uh, the district forester was out there, and the and the owner said, "I have this weird shrub that really bendy twigs, you know, down the bottoms there. You know, let's go look at it." And it was undocumented leatherwood, mm -hmm. which is really kind of neat. And so Travis Neal was uh, my friend, colleague, and assistant, and he turned me on to this idea of taking selfies with all the rare plants. So I got into that this year, try to get picture with the rare species. And then this one here is filmy ferns, you may have heard of, Vanden Boschia, Boschiana, used to be Trichomenes, but you know, we've had a lot of name changes going on. But this one, I think there's 16 populations across Southern Illinois. It only grows kind of in the uh, recesses of sandstone overhangs and cliffs and things. So back where it's really dark in the darkest, deepest crack of the sandstone you can see populations in fact i got buddy here nick seaton pointing at the filmy fern you can see you had to really crawl back to, to get them now this is kind of in like the sand cave belts with springs area and bob evers who collected plants for the illinois natural history survey for his career he collected plants in every county of illinois every year so he's got like 100,000 or some crazy number of specimens at the Illinois Natural History Survey. And he walked all these bluff lines in the 50s, the late 50s, and found a lot of these filmy fern locations. And some more have been found since then. Um, but there's a number of them around in Polk County, Johnson County. And while we were there, we came across this interesting plant. It's a liverwort. So, right, the bryophytes are the hornworts, the liverworts, and mosses. And there are... Simple thalloid liverworts, there are complex thalloid liverworts, and there are uh, leafy liverworts. So this is the simple thalloid version. And what's interesting here is the green parts here are the gametophyte. You know, bryophytes are a little different than other organisms in that it's the, the gametophyte has one set of chromosomes. And so that's what you see displayed. But the stalks here are the sporophytes. So they're basically the reproductive parts. And my buddy was telling me that 
they grow through cell expansion instead of cell division, which basically means that they can um, they can grow very quickly because it's just a single cell that just expands itself. And so they're very ephemeral. So he said, you know, this liverwort is uh, pretty common in the Shawnee Hills, but to see the sporophytes like that are very ephemeral. So he thought that was kind of a cool pick. That's why it made, made it into this slideshow. So that was about the highlights for March. And moving into April, things really start getting ramped up with botanizing. Particularly, I wanted to go see some rare plants that I had never seen before. So this is the Draba cuneifolia. It only occurs in Monroe County. There are a number of things that are more common, in fact, pretty common in Missouri, that just barely get into Illinois and often just in Monroe County. So this is a little mustard. It's got white flowers, short little plant, and... Um, my spouse, Susan, and I did the survey together. And at first it appeared that if, because there's a very similar Draba reptans that grows together with it, which is a non-native mustard. So you have to look closely. And we thought at first, if it had the stellate hairs on the basil leaves, then that was the key to ID. And you can see the hairs there, they're branched. Well, the stell stellate is like starry. So it's talking about these branched hairs. Well, we you know learned later that that isn't a real is not a reliable ID for that. We actually returned to the site later and redid it because we weren't confident that we had had it sorted out fully at first. So what you really want to look for with this one, the basil leaves are notched. You can see they have a little bit of a, a lobing to them, very subtly, but the hairs can be straight or branched. Another good characteristic is that the stems and the fruits are hairy and the other ones would be smooth. So that's something that you can <laughs> kind of see with the naked eye, but often this is what surveying for Drabble looks like yeah. in early April. You're looking close. Now they grow on limestone on the edge of limestone cliffs, you know, on Folts Hill Prairie basically and other places around, around there, Monroe County. And here's a, a especially tiny one uh, that I saw, but you can see it's got hairs up that red stem. And so that would make it the rare cuneifolia. So that was fun to get those documented. And another plant, very rare. I've only seen this in two places. Um, Hope, they were actually both in Hardin County in the Carver's Ridge area. The striped wintergreen, it's more common, you know, like in Georgia to the south and to the east. But there are a couple ones here. They are evergreen. So we were able to see them even in early April. And these ones have capsules on them. So they clearly had bloomed the year before. Travis was able to go back in June and catch them in bloom. And, and I went and I was too late. You know, was, we're out every day, but it's still hard to get, you know, all these objectives taken care of. So I, I got to go back this June and get that one in, in flower. But here was one that I had never photographed in Illinois before. I've seen it in, in Wisconsin. And I wanted to photograph past flowers, which only occur in the northern top two tiers of counties in Illinois. So I gave a talk at Crystal Lake in McHenry County on botanical humor for the Master Gardeners Conference. And the next day I drove over to Winnebago County to Harlem Hills to vote, photograph the pasque flower and then many patens. And there's the selfie with that beautiful little one. You know, this brown, hardly anything happening out on the gravel prairie, but that's when the pasque flower likes to grow around April. Hence the name. And this is also anemone patens is an older name, but I, I use the names that I know and that are in this book here, The Vascular Flora of Illinois. So that was a beautiful one I'd never seen in Illinois. And then I was went on to do the big tree measurements and I did 11 trees that weekend. And I started with the champion cottonwood, which I did measure for, you know, just because I was there, but it didn't really need remeasuring. So I didn't turn in any new statistics. I got numbers that were pretty close to what it said anyway, but this is the, this is the biggest tree in Illinois. So biggest meaning a combination of the size of the trunk, the circumference in inches, the height in feet, and the spread of the crown also in feet. So this one has 491 points, the tallest, or not the tallest, the largest, the biggest state champion of any kind. And this is in Byron. So it was neat. I actually, so I was there on April 9th, and then I returned in June. That's why I have this picture where it's all green. I got to see it with its uh, full foliage out. But when I was there in April, I did this selfie style instead of the tree hugging pose on 28 and a half feet circumference. That was just massive, massive tree. Where's and then Byron? I, what? Where's Byron? Byron is just is north of Oregon, Illinois, in Ogle County, it's Rockford. You know, it's the southwest of Rockford. 
Um, so I went on to measure some other large trees that just a couple here I want to share with you. Like I said, January 8th, like the whole program, you can hear about all, I did 80 trees in total. So come out for that. Um, That'll be here. Hmm? That's, That's going to be here. Yep. Sunday, uh, two o'clock, hmm. January 8th. So I went on to black cherry. Now it's interesting. I've, I see trees all the time in the woods and you think, wow, that looks like a large, you know, sassafras or whatever. And, and often it's not even close to what the champions are because they're often open grown or they're maybe fertilized or planted and whatever. So anyway, this is a huge black cherry in Tremont, which is in Taswell County, this set of at a school, public school there. And then the champion Catalpa was in Kiwani on private land in between two homes. And this was the current homeowner when I stopped there and posed with the nice big Catalpa tree. So those were really fun ones to see. Definitely big, big champions. When I was in the area then, so I stayed over but with a friend in Oregon and I went to George Fell Nature Preserve, which is one of my new favorite nature preserves. I hadn't explored it very much until this last year, but there's an overlook there. We can climb the stairs and look over the Rock River and essentially right across the street is a really nice seat that I've stopped at for many years to see skunk cabbage. Skunk cabbage is really only in the four-fifths of northern Illinois, so we don't get it this far south. It's an early blooming, you know, wildflower. Um, it it's, smells fetid, like the name suggests. And then getting a selfie was a little bit tricky on this one because it's this mucky. It grows in these seepy, mud, wet areas. But I was able to do that. So I wanted to see the skunk cabbage. And then I went over to White Pine State Park which is a great place to find snow trillium. Again, snow trillium is not necessarily rare in Illinois, but doesn't occur this far south and populations are scattered. It's not an easy one necessarily, necessarily to find, but there is a nice population there at White Pines. And these are really small little flowers. They're hard to really capture well. So there's a selfie with the little, you know, there were hundreds across the, the, the leaves there, but it was tough to get a good mass bloom photo. But that was neat to see. So the past flower, the skunk cabbage, the snow trillium, definitely like trifecta of three early, you know, very interesting, neat wildflowers of northern Illinois. But then I wanted to see this one, which actually only grows in southern Illinois, in Massac County. It grows, um, it was discovered uh, as in Illinois by John Schwegman because it grows in the vacant lot next to his house. <laughs> And so I had told him for years, I want to see this. This is in the Waterley family. I said, there's this baby blue eyes plant I've never seen. And he you know, said, oh, I'll keep an eye out for it. And he said, they're blooming to, you know, now. And so we drove down. It's basically my metropolis. Shredmans live on the, uh, on the Ohio River. And so we got to see this little wildflower that I'd never photographed before. It's endangered in Illinois. A little water leaf. We actually went on to two other sites that day and found this plant there as well, nearby, but they weren't mapped. So we kind of expanded the known occurrences for that one. And I'm laying on the ground here to get the selfie with the with that one. But just down the road there. Mm -hmm. So only in Massac County? Wait, wait. Correct. Now, Facilia ranunculoide, Facilia ranunculacea looks very similar, and I'm actually still kind of hashing out no, the differences I, 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 there. So you could confuse that, but yeah, just Massac currently. Uh, silver bells was growing along the road by Schwegmans as well, and so Travis wanted to see those, so we stopped to photograph. It was rainy that day, so they're not the greatest photo of the flower, but the silver bells also endangered just in Massac and Pulaski County along the Ohio uh, here in southern Illinois. There's a selfie with the with the silver bells, right? Roadside there was kind of neat. They're hanging on. But then this was really fun as well. So Harvey's Buttercup was added to the threatened list in 2020. So it's pretty newly added. Um, and it was discovered at Piney Creek Ravine in Illinois by Dr. Molenbrock in the 50s, I think. So there are a number of populations in that area of kind of the Jackson uh, Randolph County line. But I have friends, uh, David and Daniel Presley, who have land in Pomona. And we were there on a Saturday for a birthday party. And we have two labs and they were acting very um, energetic. And so I thought, well, I'm going to take them up into the woods and try to get them to run around and calm down. And when I got up in the woods, I saw this bluff line in sandstone on their property. And I thought, oh, maybe a bit, what if there's some French shooting star, maybe some bishop's cap, you know, something kind of neat. And I walked all along this uh sandstone bluff and at the very end i saw this dense green patch of plants that ended up being uh, michigan lilies which michigan lilies often grow 
in big patches and don't bloom. So that wasn't that unusual. But I was like, what's that up there? And I thought, oh, okay, there's Michigan lily. And right below it was blooming Harvey's buttercup, unknown population in Pomona. And this is, you know, Pomona to Piney Creek Ravine. That's They're both in Jackson County, but well, Piney Creek is on the border with Randolph. But in any event, that's pretty far apart. So this was a new population. Like I had about 30 plants or so. I came out with one specimen and was like, can, look, can you believe what I found? Of course, you know, nobody knew what I had in my hand, really. <laughs> uh, but uh, Theron Hobson, who works for the Nature Conservancy, said, when I saw you go up in there, I knew you were going to find something cool. <laughs> and I was like, this is way cooler than anything. I, I just not on my radar at all. So that was super exciting. And this is this is supposedly my day off, you know, <laughs> finding more rare plants. Then I got a call from Jenny Lesko, who's the district forester, Southern Illinois for IDNR, and she's reviewing all these uh, FDA plans for, for forest management. And she's been finding neat plants there. She's very well versed in the local flora. And she said, I got this chickweed. Will you come take a look at it? We went out there, county record for Stellaria pubera, the great chickweed. This was it's really only known at uh a couple places in Polk County. This is not far from Polk County. You know, county lines are totally arbitrary, but that is how we track plants. We want to say it's in this county, in that county. So this was newly documented for, for Johnson. It's it's a big deal it's to get, you know, county records. And I mean, I have some state records that I'll share with you a little, bit, a little bit later. But this is a beautiful chickweed. I actually showed up on Ronda and Ron Rothrock's land the same. as well. And that's Jackson County. That was a county record also. So lots of things to still find. It is a beautiful uh, plant for sure. And there was a lot of it there. This was on Bay Creek, like near Simpson, basically. Uh, and then this was a super cool story. The Florida bellwort, Uvularia floridana. This was the hidden in plain sight plant. The, the, the common bellwort we have, which is pretty much everywhere in the woods, is the large flowered bellwort, Uvularia grand, grandiflora. And that one has where the stem goes through the leaf. So the leaf wraps all the way around the stem. It's perfoliates the term. It makes it very easy to identify. Then we have one that has leaves that just hug the stem called sessile, sessilifolia. And everybody kind of identified and assumed along Heron Pond Trail, that's what this plant was. Well, Heron Pond celebrated their 50th anniversary. And through that, uh, Travis Neal was working with the Friends of the Nature Preserves. He posted a photo on INAT and someone looked at it from somewhere else and said, this is not Cecilifolia. This is Floridana. And we're like, huh? It doesn't occur in Illinois or is it known, wasn't known to occur in Illinois or any of the adjacent states. It's in Florida and ten, uh, Alabama, Georgia, Mississippi, and not that common there. And it's basically, if you see where the flower is, there's a leaf that's on the same stalk as the flower is. The sessile foliage doesn't do that. that. That's called a bract. A leaf associated with the inflorescence is a bract. The flowers look different as well, but they don't bloom for very long. And they're right along the Heron Pond Trail, though, where like it's been heavily botanized for so long. You think, how did this escape detection? And in fact, sessile folia grows with it. You can see them together on the right as you come off the uh, the bridge over the, the cache. It's on the right side of the trail. You know, go there in April. I mean, this was like huge, this, 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 this distribution of this plant. How, how long had it been there? How had it been overlooked? New to the state. So that'll probably get up on our on our uh, endangered list. And then this plant here, the bird's foot violet, you know, this is a little more common in, in northern Illinois, I, I feel. I don't see it very much around here. It's at LaRue, Pine Hills. I've seen it at Burke Branch. This is at uh, Piney Creek Ravine. And often they're all the same light purple, but then you get these bicolor ones as well. And they are just stunning little violets. We have 32 species of violets in Illinois. This is the bird's one. And then this one, you know, I just really like blue cohosh. When you see blue cohosh, you should look around for other goodies because it's what we call a conservative plant. It really only occurs in intact, high quality, rich wood areas. Um, so it's kind of a, a, a neat one there in the spring and then the bishop's cap pretty restricted there's a little bit here at giant city state park it's at fern cliff um of course the best place probably to see it is little grand canyon this is a, a different canyon that i know about um in uh in jackson county as well but you can see when it's in full bloom it just looks gorgeous on these cliffs the bishop's cap matilla defila and then moving into may 
I don't know if things are really getting ramped. There's so much that comes blooming in May. Now, the yellow stargrass is, is not that uncommon, but it seemed like it had an amazing year this year. I mean, it's weird like that with plants sometimes. You think just some years it seems like a particular species just blooms like crazy. And this is that shelter one bluff. So where everyone likes to climb and walk up to the top, it was blooming like crazy up there this year. Nothing I'd ever seen before. Cute little uh, mile cot. And then I saw this strange tree. This isn't here at Giant City. I forget where I took that, but it looks kind of like a hippopotamus or something. It's a neat looking beech tree. Chris, I'm gonna, so the star grass, how, how many counties is it? Found uh, I'm not sure. Probably most of them. Okay, because I was I was gonna say I knew where I saw some. It's not commonly encountered necessarily. I usually see it on sandstone glades and trail edges and stuff around here. This is that part near Sahara Woods that had something. Now, this is a really bizarre looking plant, the American feather foil. This used to be listed and it was removed because it's too common. Uh, my friend Abel and I joke that it's a roadside weed because you can see it from the highway. It's on Highway 148. This population is on Old 13, just, just outside of Carbondale, basically um, like before before you get from in between Giant City Road and Reed Station Road. You know, so this is the thing is a botanist has one eye on the road, one eye in the ditch. And that's how you see these things. And we drove by, whoa, turn around, go back. Like, wow, full, these last for like a week. We told people to go and I posted on Facebook and said, oh, I want to go see them. And I said, OK, here's the spot. They went a week later and they, they didn't look that good. You got to really get them in early April. Um, this is related to shooting star. It's in the primrose family, the feather foil, and it's an annual and it floats on the water like that. So it, you know, depending on flooding issues, it, it may not be there every year. So when you see these big blooms, it's really a sight to behold. That Hotonia. Now, strawberry bush is another one that I love. You know, euonymus, there's a lot of non-native euonymus that people like to plant in their yard and in the nursery trade. And they don't really stay put all the time. Fire shrub being the classic one. But we have good native euonymus that that should be promoted more for native landscaping like the American strawberry bush. So interestingly, this plant will occur in sandstone ravines, like Hardin County, I see it a lot, but then also in the coastal plain. There's a lot of it in the Cache River region, so totally different habitat for those. Um, but they have beautiful cream colored flowers. And then if you go later in the year, you see what the real pretty part with this, the capsules that burst open. So they call it hearts of Bustin. In fact, uh, on the Heron Pond Trail, you can see this one as well. Um, right along the trail there going to the boardwalk, the American strawberry bush. While we were also in the same area finding that one on the way back, we walked we walked down through the sandstone cliffs at the base and then we went across the top in the return route. And there were just hundreds, if not thousands of common shooting stars blooming through the woods. I, I've rarely seen anything like this. I mean, the Rimrock Trail has got a lot of common shooting star, but Otherwise, you don't see it just carpeting the woods like this. Really amazing. So there's the selfie with Nick in the background, the shooting stars. This is our common shooting star in every county of Illinois. So there are three species um, in the state, one of which is the French's shooting star, which didn't make it into this year's slideshow. Now, I did the flora of Kincaid Lake for the Forest Service. So on the Forest Service side uh, in 2018, and I spent about 30 days with a friend just investigating plants. And we found a number of cool things like the shining club moss. So not listed. When you look at it statewide, there's enough populations, but it's pretty rare and restricted um, in Southern Illinois, I feel. So I want to know where all the places are that it has been known to occur. And this was a, a, a spot we found in 2019. So I returned there to redocument it growing in one of these little, you know, Kincaid Lake is not super inviting for the average hiker to explore. The, the trails there are are rugged and there's not a lot of them. You know, people ride horses there sometimes that are a little easier to, to, to go through. But, you know, if you're going off trail just through the woods, there's lots of little sandstone coves where there's waterfalls and, you know, these different, like we saw basswood growing with this, which you don't see very often. So this is notable that this club moss occurs there, but also nearby, which I wanted to update and I'd never seen, was a large population of Plantago cordata, which is very rare in our area. I think we have 10 populations and not usually a lot of plants, but these were robust, just huge individuals. And this creek was one of the nicest creeks that I've ever walked and looked at. Again, it's like in the, the south side 
was like the southwest sort of area of Kincaid Lake. Um, and it was just, we counted over 400 of these plants there. Just, just uh, us, you know, they like clear um, running streams. And so we often have, if you have issues with flooding or if you have issues with sedimentation, then that'll ruin populations. So this is a high quality stream. You can see the grass in the background there, the, the quote unquote grass. It's a sedge called Carex torta. That's a good associate. You see those in a uh, high quality stream habitat. And then I went on to um, help Steve Tillman, who was also with IDNR. He found a new green trillium site in Jackson County. So we went to monitor those and counted about 100 or so, I think. You can see the variation in the petal color, which is interesting. Green trillium is very rare, too, in southern Illinois. We have populations in Union and Jackson only. Um, I think less than 10. I think we have seven or eight in total. So very rare, very neat trillium there. And then this year, another one new to Illinois. So Jenny Lesko, again, was doing a forest management plan near Lake Glendale, Polk County. And she was in a planted pine stand on private land and came across this orchid in full bloom. It had not been documented in Illinois. The southern twayblade. blade. It used to be um, Listera australis. Now it's Neodia biflora. It's actually bifolia. Type of day. <laughs> in any event... Um, it is an orchid that hadn't been documented before, and it's not like it was in a pristine habitat or anything. So it's it's confusing sometimes with these plants that are they moving with climate change issues? Are they moving with animals? Were they were they brought in with soil of the of the, the somehow associated with the pine cones that were planted or the saplings or whatever? I don't know. Um, orchids have tiny little dust like seed that is presumably then spread far and wide by the wind. So it's not unbelievable to think it is. You know, moving north from where it's known. But in any event, it is documented new to the flora of Illinois. Let's help me on that one. Now, uh, in 2018, I also did botanical survey for Touch of Nature for their multi-use trails. Before they were built, they wanted to see if there were any rare plants along the proposed route. That was really awesome that they took the time to do that. It's often not done. <laughs> and so I was... Uh, uh, happy to do that work. And there were no rare plants that were known at Touch of Nature at that time. And one of them, one of several rare ones that I documented through that project was the buffalo clover. Illinois threatened. It only occurs in Jackson County in southern Illinois. There's populations up north like Medewin and, and others, um, Medewin Tallgrass Prairie. But in southern Illinois, it's just a few places. There's a lot of it actually here, Giant City State Park. But it grew at uh, Touch of Nature and the bike trails kind of went through one of the spots that, well, I'll make a long story short. I thought maybe the bike trails were going to be problematic for this species. Instead, they love it. Now, it's called buffalo clover because it's associated with uh, disturbance by buffalo. It needs that soil disturbance. And so, you know, we don't have buffalo around anymore. It's a rare plant. So we call it bicycle clover now. It's associating with bicycle trails. And you can see here in the picture, it's growing out in the trail. So I think they, the, the disturbance and the increased light, they, they like the, the trails there. And you can see how we flag individuals there in the background. Sometimes they can be even red. So that's kind of pretty. And then wait for it, the obligatory <laughs> selfie with the rare plant. So now it may look um like a regular white clover but it has leaves on the same stem as the flowers so your lawn clover the, the flowers are on their own stock the leaves are on their own stock but on the native buffalo clover they're together so that's one way to identify the trifolium reflexum quite rare in illinois now another project i worked on this year i spent four weekends at scott air force base doing inventory there they hadn't had that done in over a decade and so that was an interesting project for sure. And a uh, friend, Abel Kinzer, does a lot of botanizing with me. We went up there four weekends. They have a campground. So we stayed over at the on base and we botanized. And we found the Virginia waterleaf, which is a common wildflower, generally speaking, but it doesn't get this far south. It's one that he had never seen before. And it was quite pretty. So I threw that one in. It's remarkable. And the same story is true for this purple rocket. This is a native mustard, Iodanthus panatophytus. I've seen this in um, in Hardin County along the Ohio. I've seen it in Fort Massac State Park. That, that's the only two places I can think of other than up at Scott Air Force Base, which is in St. Clair County. So there was a lot of this in the floodplain. So that was also remarkable. And we call a lifer for my buddy Abel. I hadn't seen it before. 
Then also Jenny Lesko again was reviewing, uh, was looking at a landowner woods and she said, I, I, they got the Illinois wood sorrel there. This is a species that John Schweigman described during his career as state botanist as new to science. He thought, this, you know, and it's known more than just in Illinois, but it's described from actually a place that he called Martha's Woods after his wife, where he discovered this uh, new to science Illinois wood sorrel. It looks similar to your the weedy garden, you know, oxalis, but they're much larger, mar larger leaves and much larger flowers. So you can see they're two centimeters. Whoa, that's huge. Uh, but it, it was just carpeting this landowner's woods. And while we were there, we also found large leaf water leaf in full bloom. I've only seen it blooming one other time. Also, something I think that we should investigate is possibly state threatened species. We also found the Appalachian bug bane there, and we found the leatherwood there, and we had Carex nigra marginata. That we had like six list track things there, and there was just the one we were going to see. So the really nice woods. Heavily, um, has seen a lot of management, form of uh, timber stand improvements, basically thinning of the forest, and then prescribed fire. You don't see bee balm grow like this very often. Bee balm is all over the place in the woods, but if you see a big dense stand of it all blooming like this, it's because there's a you know more light basically reaching the forest floor. So really remarkable to see that species. You know, the plants are telling you things too. You know what you're looking at. There's so much information that you can get from them just by observing where they grow. And then I love this photo. It's so beautiful, the American wisteria. So we have you know, a, a non-native wisteria that's often problematic. And then we have the native one as well. And this is on grassy road. Again, this is just, you know, leaving Carbondale and going all around Southern Illinois. There's certain roads you're always on and grassy road is one of them. And we're like, whoa, pull over, turn around. What's that? Native wisteria, just gorgeous. And then they're hairy. The, I think it's Chinese wisteria is uh, glabrous, not hairy. So that's one way to tell those apart. And then yellow lady slippers, as Jerry Wilhelm would say, we don't deserve this. <laughs> it is just exquisitely beautiful. I love the lady slippers. And I am documenting all the locations in Southern Illinois. They're not uh, common by any means, but not rare enough to be listed, but they're always a joy to find. And this is actually in Jackson County here. And there's a selfie with these beautiful orchids. Oh, every time I see them, I just... Take my breath away. All right. Now we went back up to Monroe County doing stuff. And up there you can find scorpions. There's only one species currently known in Illinois for the scorpions. And it's Illinois endangered. You can see it there. Um, it grows on limestone glades, basically. They hide out under rocks. So I, I took a rock. I flipped it up. This is on the underside of the rock. And then I even took a selfie with the scorpion. Mm -hmm. And that is a little on the smaller side. They don't get much bigger than that. So that's pretty much about how big they are. They're pretty small. And then under the same rock, and I'd never seen scorpions in Illinois before. I, I knew they were there. I just never gone and looked. Under the same rock, we found a narrowmouth toad. Also, I'd never seen before in Illinois. In Illinois threatened species. You see how they have a little narrow mouth. It's kind of a small little toad for sure. And it likes, you know, up in the hot, dry glade under rocks. Just a reminder that if you are looking under rocks, you want to put them back in the exact same spot, very gently. You don't want to you know, leave no trace. You can look like you didn't move the rock and so that these organisms can still use those places. So two rare critters up there in Monroe County. And in the same general area, we also monitored this, this gorgeous climbing milkweed. We have three metelias in Illinois. Two are purple or maroon and one is a yellow or green. This is the maroon one. So the Matilia obliqua is similar. It has petals that are not as wide and the center is a little different color, but they are very similar otherwise. They do not smell good. <laughs> it's one of those plants that smells like body odor, I think, where like generally it's unpleasant, but like some people like body odor, mm -hmm. you know? And so they're like, it's like, you, you think it's bad, but you kind of can't help but sniff it every time, you know? I don't know how to describe it, it's weird. <laughs> And then occasionally someone will say, oh, I like that. <laughs> so beautiful, beautiful flower, though, I think. And then milkweeds, you know, there's 19 milkweeds in the Sclepius in Illinois, but this is the red ring one. It's just hard not to photograph. Just totally beautiful. All right. So we're moving into June now. 
Lots of things wrapping up in June. This is interesting too. Aronia melanocarpa is the black chokeberry. This is at Round Bluff Nature Preserve. There are two places where this grows. And we were here in 2012 with John Swagman for the Illinois Native Plant Society uh, spring you know, potluck. And John went to show us the aronia and we couldn't find it. And he thought maybe it was gone. And I hadn't even thought about it since then. And then um, it's a really good student who just actually graduated, Matt Tomlinson, was out of forestry here at SIU. And he was finding everything. He's sending me all these cool stuff. So he relocated the aronia at Round Bluff. And we were there and tracked it down. And you can see it's got developing fruits on it. So that means it produced flowers and they have pretty white flowers. So may go back there next year and get them in bloom. So it was good to confirm as extant the aronia there. And then we, let's see, I went up to uh, do a natural areas workshop in Ogle County. And on the way along, this is just off, this is like Muhammad, uh, Interstate 74. We pulled over to see the Sangamon flocks. This subspecies is Illinois endangered. And the subspecies is what we call endemic. It only occurs in Illinois, only in Sangamon County and Piah County. And that's it. It basically looks like your regular downy flocks, but it's not as hairy. Maybe hairy up around in the flowers, but down the stems and the leaves, they're not. So this is a, a rare subspecies only in Illinois that I had never seen before. Caught it in bloom right along our route. But we went up to George Fell Nature Preserve and other places. And that's where that was. This was the visit that just blew me away with all the interesting plants at George Fell Nature Preserve, which is in the Castle Rock State Park in Oregon, Illinois. Dwarf honeysuckle, not listed. I'd never seen it bloom before. I think I've seen the plants maybe once in Lake County, all over the place. Just beautiful. Our native honeysuckle. And then the world loosestrife. Also, I think I've seen this. Uh, one time in Lake County during my graduate research, didn't encounter it otherwise. I think it's rare. You can see the world leaves there. Really cool to find that. Keep in mind, there's a Lysimachia quadriflora, which is different. This is quadrifolia as in leaves of four, even though these have five. <laughs> they say the plants don't read the books when you run, run into that kind of thing. Interrupted fern was there and amazing, full you know reproductive status. You can see the, the spores there are... Uh, you know, generated in between the leaves. So that's really interesting, hence the name interrupted fern. And there's a nice big stance of that. I hardly ever see that fern. So that was gorgeous. And then all throughout the woods, spreading dog mane. Again, another one I've seen only in Lake County during my graduate school research, never else in Illinois. And it was full bloom in the woods there. Opossinum androsema folium is there. And then also we found these more milkweeds. Poke milkweed was at uh, White Pine State Park. Such a neat looking one, I think. There's good uh, stands of it here, actually, too. The poke milkweed here at uh, Giant City. And then right at the headquarters at Natusa Grasslands, they planted some sand milkweed. That's also just a really bizarre looking one. It's not sort of your typical looking uh, milkweed. The flowers, for sure. But it's a beautiful plant. Able to catch and bloom on my travels. Also at Nechusa, they have this rare downy painted cup, Illinois Threatened. It is planted there as well. You know, they're trying to recover things. We're going to have to move them around to some extent. And so this is the Castalesia sessiliflora. And also in Ogle County, they have remnant populations of woolly milkweed, Asclepius lanuginosa. They have to really get down close to get the selfie with that rare milkweed. Is that the long, long green, the guy that's leaves right there? Yeah, those are the leaves. These short little plants can kind of narrow when your leaves there. And then also in Achusa was this huge clump of hairy pacoon. You may have heard of hoary pacoon. It's a little more common here. It's a shorter plant, a little more orange, and, and the calyx lobes are different length. But this was just an absolutely gorgeous plant there to confirm. They actually called it hoary pacoon, and we were able to look down, look, you know, dive in and ideas were like, no, 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 this is. This is a different one. So that was a fun, a fun day. And then this is a super rare wildflower that just looks like any other carrot. It grows along the road on private land in like the town, Sand Ridge Road, basically. It's an annual. So it was having a good year. I went back later this year, you know, it was really dry. So the only reason, I mean, this is a, this is farmland and this is wet usually. So that's why they persist and they, 
bloom and set seed and then later when it's dry they come and mow it or whatever but it's not they're not plowing it for for uh like the rest of the area because it's too it's too wet so it's hanging on for that reason but there's only two places in the whole state where this grows and one is like I don't know. I feel so conflicted about this. I don't know who owns it. It's right on the roadside. On the one hand, I feel like, don't say anything. Whatever they're doing is working. But on the other hand, you kind of want to be like, can you take care of this area? But, you know, not everybody wants to learn about rare plants on their land. So if they don't know it's there, sometimes you think, okay, well, maybe we should just be quiet. It's it's persisting. Is that a um, No, it's annual. And so that, you know, as long as the soil isn't disturbed too bad, you know, they can, they can, you know, mow it fine as long as it sets seeds and it'll come back in good years. So that's, that's really an interesting one. But also uh, around, we're getting more populations for the spring ladies' tresses orchid, which we also monitored at Rhonda and Rob Rothrock's land. In fact, I think that's where I took my selfie picture with that beautiful spiraling orchid. This thing is on the move. And anywhere there is a grassland that's not being mowed or hayed, it seems like it comes up in that area. So keep on a lookout for that. It blooms in June. So almost all, pretty much all the other spiranthes in our area are blooming in September or later. So it's the early one. I wouldn't call June spring, but uh, it's definitely earlier than the others. We also went up to Monroe County. It's the only county locally in, this, in our Southern Illinois region for blue hearts, the Bucanera Americana. And it's, Challenging work to um, flag every stem, but when you have a few hundred, you know, if you're walking through and you're just saying one, two, three, and then you're like, oh, wait, did I count that one? Or if you're just keeping track in your head, you're like, oh, wait a minute, what was I at? Now you can use a counter, but you know, all those things are prone to error. What's easiest is to just you turn your brain off almost and you just, it's like a child could do it. You know, you just find a stem blooming and you put a flag in and you do them all and then you click. Collect all the flags and count. That's the best way. But it, it's laborious. You got to sit there. It's hot. It's full sun, you know, but it really works well uh, for some things to flag them all, like the blue hearts. Really, really beautiful wildflower there up in Monroe County. All right, moving into July. So now this is uh, Pale Avens. It's, this is uh, our GM Virginianum. So GM Canadensi. Everywhere, all over the woods, you see it's a native plant, it's white flowers, it looks similar. This is a pale cream color flower, smaller petals. Otherwise, it looks exactly the same. I've seen this at Bellsmith Springs and here, Panther Den. And I was taking my flora class. We're hiking the woods back into the den area, looking at plants. And I walk by and I'm like, oh, you know, everybody gather around. And they're all like, what? what? You know, what are we looking at? Super rare plant. It's not listed, but I think we should add it the next uh, go around, which we're actually starting soon. So pale avens, really interesting find there, Panther Den. And crested coral root orchid is Hexelectris. Also rare. These are not my best pictures, but I showed these pictures because they're the actual ones of what we found. At one, uh, we had 15 subpopulations last year for about 500 plants total. And we found two new places this year. And one was at Monroe County. We're looking for blue hearts in another part. We found them. We went down this ravine and back up to check this other glade just to, you know, long story short, we're walking up. It's so hot. We're going up this hill. We're dying. And Travis is leaning over and I, I saw a bench and I just sprinted to the bench and like, I got to sit down. And Travis instead, you know, looked over where he was and here's <laughs> orchid going right there in the grass. That's the one on the left. New, new location. And then the next one, it was in Polk County which we have a location in Polk County, but it's on private lands and this is on public. So there's only two populations now for this in Polk County. That was a big find as well. And then of course the selfie at another site for that one. This is one that we're visiting all known populations every year. And we've done so far two years in a row. So we're gonna get really good data for that one over time. Now the superb lily I was able to iron out as well. Looks like Michigan lily. The thing to look at is the style. So you see the, the the curved structure there. It's like a yellowish color with a little bit of brown at the tip. So that is for the superb lily. It has the style that's not the same color as the petals, basically. Um, and it makes it very rare. It's a large plant. There's only one place where I know that it occurs. It used to be on the state list, and they took it off because it was apparently too common. But I think it should go back on. I think it was misidentifications there and like i said i don't know one place where it's extant 
in Pope County, actually. Now, feather bells is another beautiful plant, Denanthium graminium. This is on a water body. Actually, Chris Evans found this. He was kayaking at this uh, lake, and he's like, what is that? This is a tall plant with just really big, bushy flowers. And it was a new population in uh, Williamson County. And I had not been there before, so we visited this year, and they were in full bloom. Whew, just exquisitely beautiful, which some were found here at Johnson City State Park last year as well. And they looked, they didn't, this year, none of them bloomed. They didn't look at this, but last year they were top notch. Now, here was a really fun trip too. So I said, there's, I said 19, there's 19 total, but one's non native. There's 18 native Asclepius milkweeds in Illinois. And I'd seen and photographed them all except one. And the one grows up in like sort, sort of near Quincy, like Western Illinois, farther north in, in like Pike County and Calhoun and in that area. So some of us went up on a weekend. We drove four hours to see this plant, the narrow leaf milkweed, in bloom on this hill prairie, and then four hours home on the same day. So that was fun. And so we did a selfie with the whole crew there uh, up in, uh, this is actually up in Pike County to see the narrow leaf milkweed, which I had never photographed before. So now I have seen and photographed mm -hmm. in Illinois all of our native milkweeds. Now we're going into August here. Meadow Beauty, oh, such a good name. It is sure a beauty. There's a similar species here. It has a little bit paler color flowers. There are a few other differences. One here is in the capsules. I have to look at the length of the tube. So the, the one on the left goes with the picture on the left, which is the sort of more common Rexia virginica. And the one on the right is Rexia mariana, which is on our state endangered list. And they grow side by side, actually, in crab orchard of all places. Just kind of neat to document there. Um, and then the butterfly pea, whenever we find in bloom, it's just exquisitely gorgeous wildflower. It's always worth a mention and a show to Glitoria Mariana. And here's another metal beauty. Apparently, this uh, somewhat rare new species are split out from Mariana interior, which was really fun to see. There's actually a lot of it. This is in. Um, this is in West Frankfurt, actually, which is kind of surprising. Mm -hmm. There's a large area of the meadow beauty blooming under a power line. Under a power they need they look like it wet and sunny. In fact, we found new population of Rexia on Robin Ron Roth Rock probably this year <laughs> as well. It's lots of cool stuff out there. If you give plants places to grow, they will. Oh. And here, a rattlesnake observation. This uh, snake. We, I was, the, there were three of us and I was in the back and he was probably, she, she was probably four feet off the trail, but it wasn't until I went by and then all of a sudden it started rattling. And I, you know, I was thinking cicada at first or what, and then I'm like, whoa, rattlesnake, no way. So that was really neat. See, this was in, uh, over by Garden of the Gods. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> at the same site. When I was <laughs> right right at the same site we were going up the bluff and we saw another one but this one is the most unusually patterned rattlesnake that i've ever seen in fact it made a whole round on the internet and on facebook because herbers had never seen a rattlesnake that striped like this you can see the sort of the tail end there it looks a little more normal pattern but um really aberrant form here of the timber rattlesnake so we had two at that site that day and that was really fun and i did take a selfie with the rattlesnake kind of pointing at it there uh travis actually walked across the top of this log before we knew that it was there and then you know i came up a different way i'm like whoa cool that was super fun why didn't you face yeah why not <laughs> i wonder uh, and then a cool other, so I have a bunch of spiranthes in here, the little ladies' tresses, or the ladies' tresses orchid. This is the small flowered one. It grows on these dry places. So that was worth mentioning in there. But then I want to show you on the way back to the parking lot, we went the same way. We encountered the same snake, the first one. And this time it was on the moon. It was a pretty healthy individual, I would say. And it, it's weird to see them rattling as they crawl. Usually they coil up and rattle. And this one was moving the whole time, rattling all along the way. So we watched it and filmed it a little bit and then, you know, left it alone and went on our way. Where was this at? In Southern Illinois. <laughs> Over. 
Oh, yeah. Garden of the Gods ish. Yeah, that's what we were yeah. Talking. Not there, but in that area. Chris, what's your definition of Southern Illinois? So, Southern Illinois, is, that's a good question. Um, I. So I had to define this for book I'm working on and for the project, and I included any southern counties with unglaciated terrain. So that is the seven, the 11 southernmost counties with Randolph, Monroe, and St. Clair. So it's a little bit of a weird shape, but those are all the southern counties that have at least part of the county in unglaciated area. Yes, that is a great question. It's something I wondered about, and then I thought, well, why don't I use this, this unglaciated uh, term? We do have unglaciated areas in, you know, Calhoun County and, uh, of course, Northwest Illinois. But as far as the southernmost counties, it's four, those 14 counties. Went back to Scott Air Force Base. Like I said, we spent four times there. And the last time there was just, it's an obscure plan. Omania Robusta is something I fleshed out. It's very similar to Coxinia. And it was a county record that was really kind of neat there to document but back down in this area, uh, Travis showed me this wonderful population of spider lilies at an undisclosed location. He actually went back at night and got these just absolutely stunning nighttime shots of the spider lilies. Uh, in fact, if you're a member of the Illinois Native Plant Society, I'm the editor of the newsletter. And our last uh, issue had his photo on the cover, which came out just a couple of weeks ago. So that was really beautiful to see the spider lilies there. Now, I'm also doing a research on Heteranthera reniformis, kidney leaf mud plantain. This is very rare in Illinois, which is funny because this is where it likes to grow. These, you know, muddy ruts where ATVs are, you know, most of these are old logging roads that aren't accessible by, are not legally accessible by motorized traffic. So people are doing it anyway. And this plant loves to grow and it's the muddy rut along these muddy dirt paths. But it is a beautiful little wildflower for sure. Another annual. And it has white flowers with yellow on them. Because it's very similar to this bud plantain, which is also somewhat rare, uh, the Heteranthera missouriensis. But these are purple, purple on purple. How big are those leaves? Um, about like this, a couple inches maybe at most. I found that the Missouri mud plantain leaves are longer than they are wide. They're larger overall. They're really glossy and they're not usually variegated. And this is an annual as well. Also an annual. And they grow in mud flats, large, you know, got to be wet, but not submerged. Where these are about as long as wide. They're more variegated, um, different colored flowers, smaller, smaller uh, leaves, but they like to grow in mud. Some other cool swamp plants, these swamps are just totally fun places to explore. You know, they're very wet and challenging, but this is called a sponge plant. They have uh, separate male and female flowers there. See the male flower on the sponge plant. Looks similar to the mud plantain, but a little different. Uh, also, we stopped to photograph these wild beans that is really only one of, there's three species in this Strophostyles genus, and this is the only um spot I know for this umbelata. And then we saw common milkweed out here is covered in monarchs. That was kind of neat to, to throw into the slideshow as well. Now, this is super cool. I talked about the Moronia at, at, at uh, Round Bluff. This is here at Giant City State Park. I'm with my floral class in June and we're on the rocks on the way up to Shelter One Bluff. And I look over and I think, what is that? And it's just super stemmy. I mean, there are probably a hundred stems and just a small little patch. And I looked at the leaves and I'm like, that looks like an Aronia. But it's it's all hairy. And the, I just saw the Roni I told you showed you earlier, you know, and so I'm like, this isn't that. And so I was all puzzled about it. And I, you know, went back and dug into it. And it's new to Illinois, Aronia arbutifolia. Now this one is you can easily obtain this in the nursery trade. So perhaps it's planted locally and it escaped from there. Birds like to move them. It's hard to say, like I said earlier, about how they get there. But this is previously undocumented new wild population for this Aronia. Here at China City State Park. So Dr. Molenbrock, I mentioned I visit with him uh, every couple months, and he did his thesis on the flora of Giant City in 1954. Mm -hmm. And so I told him I found this plant new to Giant City. And he was like, Where? And I said, Shelter One Bluff. He goes, No way, I catalog everything already that grows there. You know, I'm like, Yeah, 70 years ago. <laughs> so that was really fun to tell him about. You can see aronias have these red trichomes along the veins on the upper surface. So that, I mean, you see that and you should go right to aronia. And that, that's why I knew for sure it was, but they're all hairy. And that isn't like our other ones. So that was fun one to find. 
So let's breeze through here. There were some more. Uh, Azola fern is an aquatic fern. You see they're floating with duckweeds and, and uh, mud plantain and such. And then the pink turtle head is also a wetland plant. We are tracking this one as well. I only know of like six subpopulations. This was a new subpopulation, actually a crab orchard, which was fun. Uh, Dan Wood is their biologist and, and it's, you know, you can't, it takes an army, right? To do anything and connect to these people and they communicate and he's sending me stuff. He's looking at Jenny Lesko and Steve Tillman. I mean, all, everyone's out there and they're just sharing information. We're making so many finds uh, lately. And this was new population, at least new to me, undocumented for that. And then I love a nice limestone glade. This is at Cave Creek Glade, which is closed to the public now um, because of some vandalism essentially that occurred. But you can still go there with a permit. You can a pu The public can obtain a permit. They just want to keep track of who's going there. We had a permit to do monitoring there. Uh, we were there and I photographed the marble seed here, which I think is just a really cool plant. It used to be Onosmodium. Molly variety hispidissimum, which I always liked that name, but I like little spermum too because little spermum means rock seed, and you can see it's got these really hard little uh, white seeds to them. But the prairie dog was in full bloom on the glade, and it was just outstanding. This is just you know definitely one of the nicest limestone glades in our region, and then also the somewhat uh, uncommonly seen blazing star Lycus squarulosa. <laughs> There is a Lyatris squarosa, which has long pointed fillories. These are rounded, so a little bit different, but I don't see that one very much. So I thought I'd throw that in to the mix. And then some rare sedges. This, these are wetland sedges. They often grow together. Actually, at several sites that we documented all three of these. Um, Carex intumescens is on the, the left. That's Illinois threatened, but is becoming very common, should be removed. Uh, Carex gigantea is in the middle. And that is rare. We have three or four locations. Two of them were new last year. And then Carex lupuliformis is on the right. And that one is not listed, but it should be. And those two, the one in the middle and the one on the right, look very similar. So you got to look at the achenes. The achenes are the fruit. So you know, the inflated part there is a, it's called a perigenia. It's, in, it's a capsule, papery capsule. So you got to tear it open and get inside the achene and look at the shape. And they, you know, they're subtly similar, but different. Um, but it got Gigantia on the left there and Lupuliformis on the right. So those are always neat to find. You can tell you can I've gotten to the point where I can roll a perigenia in my hand and feel how knobby they are. And you can be like, OK, this is the rare one because sedges do get challenging to ID. We were also trying to get uh, all the Femoranthus locations down. So this is the small flowered fame flower. It is a tiny little plant. Here you can see the selfie with the. Wildflower, they open in our area about five o'clock. They are late bloomers to say the least. Uh, and at one site, we had 3,000 that we counted on these sandstone blades. So Johnson County is pretty much the, the heart of the range for this plant in, in Southern Illinois. So there's not, there's maybe a dozen populations. And when you go there, when they bloom, you know, they say they open about five o'clock. Really beautiful, little succulent. And then a couple of ferns, I'll skip over here because I don't have time, but those ferns are cool. Another lady's tresses, Spiranthes lacera, I don't see very often. Came with the blue curls, beautiful little wildflower. And then we were back up in late September to George Fell Nature Preserve again, doing a rare plant monitoring. And they have these little sandstone outcrops and knobs. They're not cliffy necessarily, like they're not as, as it. The hills are tall, but the cliffs are not. So they have these little places where rock is exposed and you get things like blue toad flax and the sand fain flower and other neat things. Just really, um, like I said, cemented this site as one of my favorites in Illinois. I have two visits last year, one in June and one in September. And we were looking for rare lycophytes, which we didn't uh, actually find what we were looking for, but we did see more of the shining club moss, which likes these you know, shaded, moist, uh, microclimates, lots of ferns and sandstone rock there. And then I just put this in here because this just, Illinois is a pretty heavily botanized state, sort of generally speaking. We, we have, have a lot of good botanists study in Illinois. We have good botanical resources, but, uh, you know, not so, somewhat not surprisingly, I suppose, there's still more to find and to understand. And so we saw this goldenrod there, Solid Ego Hispida, if you look at the vascular floor of Illinois, it says Southern Illinois, like Union and Jackson. It's got like two counties. 
it was all over in Ogle County. So I'm like, I think this is a county record. So I write Paul Markham, who's another, you know, great botanist in the state. And I said, as I knew he had been there. And I said, did you see the Hispid golden rod there? And he said, oh, yeah. And I'm like, well, I think it's a county record. It's not mapped. He goes, Bob Evers is three collections from the 50s in the herbarium at the Natural History Survey. And I'm like, wow, how did this, how did this happen? But there's just more to document. In this case, it had been documented just for whatever reason, it didn't get in the books. But there are many golden rods in Illinois, and that's one of them. But one thing we did want to see there, a life or plant for me I'd never seen before, was the Phagopterus connectilis, the long beach fern. We have broad beach fern here. This is long beach fern, a little different. It's much elongated in its frond, and it grows on these uh, sandstone ledges. It's more common to the north and to the east, but there are a few places in Illinois like at George Fell Nature Preserve. And this is a, you have to really work a, a little bit to get in there. It's a rugged site. So that was fun. And then on our way out, I wanted to show my colleagues a couple uh, remnant prairies. So we went to Beach Cemetery Prairie, which is where the, the Beach family once owned and saw this beautiful silky aster, arguably the best aster in Symphiotricum. It's got these downy silky leaves, beautiful purple flowers. And also there, I really wanted to see the downy gentians before I left, which is a beautiful blue color. Again, you're only going to see this in high quality remnant prairies in northern Illinois. And so I was elated that they were still blooming on our visit. And another not commonly seen wildflower in Illinois is the stiff aster, Ionactus linearifolius. So that was a great visit to see some lesser known, lesser seen things for me personally. And just a few more photos here. This is a, a rare eupatorium. We had hyssopifolium, as known from Illinois. And this was a sub, a variety of that that had been elevated to its own species. And so we were figuring out, which one do we have then? And last year, I was confused, wanted to return this year. And we confirmed that this was Torianum, which is also new to Illinois. So the hyssopifolium that we thought was in Illinois, um, is not, and it's actually this species. So that's good to document. And we have two populations for that. And one, obviously, Kicksola Cemetery. So it looks just like, you know, your snake roots or your bone sets, you know, Eupatorium is the bone set genus. And then October, things were slowing down quite a bit. So just a few more and I'll wrap things up. But one really cool thing was finding the current aster in Alexander County. This is a federally threatened species. This was on the Shawnee National Forest. Before this, there was only one plant federally listed on the Shawnee, Meads milkweed. And so to be able to document another one um, was really exciting. And actually, we went down because I had seen a report near where this, um, we were going to survey this site for the Forest Service. And I said, well, let's go look at this site where this aster had been seen a couple of years ago because I'd never seen it before. So we saw it there and photographed it and thought this is really cool. And then we went up nearby to the Shawnee National Forest site and then found it all over there. Um, so that was new. In fact, I went out there with the Fish and Wildlife Service and Shawnee folks to show it to them, which, uh, you know, I asked them, is this a good thing or is this a pain? <laughs> and they kind of admitted either both because, yeah, it, they want to, this is why we have, you know, this is one reason why public lands are good. We have places for plants to live. They want that to happen on the Shawnee, but it means a lot more work on their end for something federally threatened as far as uh, their management activities. How many plants did you find? Uh, a few hundred. So this is, we have Baltonia uh, asteroides is our false aster. It looks very similar, but what is different is the, the current means winged. You can see where the, the leaf meets the stem, it flares out with the wing. So that's the, the distinct part for this one. Um, so super cool life for me. I'd never seen this plant before. It, it only grows along the Illinois River Valley pretty much and in a little bit of the Mississippi. So strange again, how did it get there? Is it totally like native naturally occurring? I don't know, but it's there and it's documented new to the Shawnee National Forest. Then we went over to Hardin County. There are, there are several species that are only in Hardin County in Illinois. Like they're, they're farther east, farther south or whatever. But in Illinois, they're only in Hardin County. And this is one, the oval-leaved catchfly, Silene ovata. 
really neat. We were able to document Silene Oveda at all the formerly known locations, and we have one new one. And while we were down in this area, we saw this gigantic caterpillar, which was an imperial moth. Just huge. So that was really neat to see in that ravine. And then I threw this one in because, you know, I travel around the state and go to places I hadn't been before. I was invited to speak to the Wild Ones group in Bloomington Normal. And someone I knew took me on a tour of Ridgetop Hill Prairie. I'd never been there before in Woodford County. So I thought it was neat to see and document that. And then just two, two, two more pictures here. I also did a huge study of Styrax and Americanus in the last two years for the Illinois Native Plant Society. This is a threatened species that I felt like if we really went to all the places it's known and counted stems, we could remove this because I think it's it's just common enough. And this is one thing that really highlights the importance of programs like Plants of Concern and monitoring where you actually do a full census because rarely our biologists who are encountering these things have the time to just really spend counting. So when you go through data that's been turned in in the past, you'll see species observed. Okay, that's worth something, but like, was there one or was there a thousand? You know, well, they were probably doing something else and they they turned in what able data they were able to gather. Or it might say 25 observed. Well, they they saw 25 and they counted them and they went on. Well, they, they did you look around for more? You know what I mean? There's all these things about... When you really cover the entire area and count all the stems, in my experience, some species are much more common than we thought. And this one I knew would fit the bill. And so I went to all the places I could find, which were, in total, I had 48 subpopulations. And I found them at all but three. And 10 of them were new spots. And I counted stems at all of them. And I had 14,000 stems. And that doesn't include two sites where there was so much I didn't even bother to count. There are thousands and thousands. So I'm pretty confident that this could be delisted because it's just, it's common. It's, it's recovered. It's doing well. Um, it's all around. It's mostly in Johnson County, but Pope, Massac, Pulaski, Alexander, all the way up into Wayne. We went up in Lawrence. We had one. Crawford County's got one spot and we went to the door and the woman was super nice and told us to get out of there. Yeah. And she wouldn't let us go in the woods, which is a bummer because that would have been the, the northern. Well, no, we had it all the way up in Kankakee too. We went up to Kankakee and counted it there. So really um, fun project. <clears throat> I'm, I'm literally wrapping up the report as we speak, like probably later tonight, I'll finally be done. It's 130 pages mm -hmm. of all the data that I collected for the American snowball bush. So this was, I was doing this, you know, this is a uh, November 1st. I think I took this photo or October 31st. You can see they kind of turn yellow later in the year and make them conspicuous. But also at the site, I saw other fun wetland plants like the marsh marigold here. The Biden's Levis is a, a rarer one. It looks like Cernua, but the flowers are way bigger. And then came across a cute little green tree frog, which I realized I was a little light on the animals this year, but I did have those two rattlesnake videos. That was cool. <laughs> in any event, that was my year of botanizing, exploring Southern Illinois nature, all of Illinois, actually. So I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll put it on my YouTube channel eventually. Otherwise, I'd be happy to answer any questions.